Hi, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Molly Nadilli. I attended school at St. Mary Magdalene for six years, and now I'm a sophomore at Apex Friendship High School. I am here on behalf of a service project that I am involved in and am very passionate about. I am a proud member of the teen board at Note in the Pocket. Note in the Pocket is a nonprofit organization that works with social workers across Wake County to deliver clothing packages to children and families in need. I am hosting a clothing drive this week and all clothes go to Note in the Pocket. There will be a bin in the main lobby of the church this weekend and next weekend. During the week, the bin will be located in the lobby of the school building. Any and all donations are greatly appreciated. At an event yesterday alone, over 600 individuals were gifted with gently used or new clothing, a luxury that we often take for granted. The joy on those kids' faces was something that I will never forget. We can all work together to help other kids and families feel joy like this by collecting clothes during this clothing drive. I will be staying for the WAY program, so if you have any questions, just come and let me know. Thank you so much.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, Father. We come together now in this dry place to be together and nourished by the Lord, both by his word, community, and his very presence and his gift of the body and blood of Christ. And we come together as people always looking to be transformed, transformed into holiness, that we can be the people God created us to be in complete freedom and in complete joy. To make that better happen to us internally, it is important too that we be honest, that we always be people who know who we are. And so now we turn to God and acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to save sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First, the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the end, he has glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness 
for there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? 
or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Nali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They, they were fishermen. He said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's been a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And just so that you know, in this community, in this church, you have a priest that's capable of praying for both teams in the playoffs, okay? So wherever your favorite team is, bring it and I'll pray for them. And even if somebody else has another team, I'll pray for them too. We're one family. And God will always pick and help the winner at the end in some way. We're gathered always to hear the word of God. And this weekend, the word of God is so rich because it's the beginning of the gospel of Jesus' ministry on earth. The readings coincide with the newness of our year 
in the cycle, which is meant to be. And Jesus starts his ministry healing and helping people. And he does it in the margins, in the bad parts of town, in the places where people are in transition, where there's poverty, where there's change and corruption, where there's families who have been torn apart by addictions and poverty, but also by unrest in the government. So there's a lot of singleness and fear. And Jesus walks into that to start his ministry, taking people what they had heard from of old, that people in darkness are waiting for the light to come. And Jesus does just that. And it's there that he chooses his disciples to follow him. People who are also there focused on other things. This salvation that Christ brings us is communal and also very much individual. And that's how our life is too. When we think how the world is and whose job it is to go out and care for everyone, whose job is it to help the poor, whose job is it to help single parent families, whose job is it to help those addicted, whose job is it to bring darkness into the light of Christ, whose job is that, is that all of our job or is it our individual job, is it your job, is it your calling? And the answer to both of those questions is yes. It's all of us. See, what's true when the church teaches about goodness, truth, and love, the three elements of God, is that what is true for one is true for all. The numbers of people we bring into Mass don't change the truth. The truth is God is calling us to live in a way that's loving and good and that we're not to do it for singular ourselves. We're to do it for God because that's where the love comes from. And in that way, we do have to reach out to those in the margins. And the way life cycles with families who are in the margins, the same reality of who they are is that they're us. We are the people also who sometimes are in the dark and need light. We are sometimes in the people who have crisis and struggles in our families and need help. We are the same people. And so God really wants us to be awake to that fact. And Jesus comes and gathers disciples in those very communities to do what? To live, to live for God. Now, does that mean self-care is gone? No. They didn't really think about it as self-care then when Jesus was gathering his first disciples. They thought about it as survival. And the life that God gives us is to be people who take care of ourselves and live. What the church asks for us is not overwhelmingly that we have to not live, but it's to be a part that our overall focus is to live for who? And the instructions we get from the life of Christ are not in any way punishing. Because if we don't take the invitation to live for God and others, and we do decide to live for ourselves, what the history of mankind shows us is that decision will bring us into the darkness, into despair, into sadness, away from the purpose of our life to love. All of that surprisingly ties in to what I got in the mail yesterday. I was happy to receive the Bishop's Annual Appeal Letter. Did you see that coming? This year, our goal has gone up. It was un unchanged for five years. But our parish has grown. Grown in both spirit and numbers. And so this year, our goal is $270,000, which requires that all of us participate in that. 
individually and as a group. If every family averages a $200 donation, we'll, we'll make it. That's a lot of money. This year, I want you to invite the young people. Now, I'm, I'm still on your side, young people, but you still have to do some things, right? I'm inviting the young people to be part of your family gift to the Bishop's Annual Appeal. And if you don't have the cash, I'm sure your parents can find ways for you to work that off. There's always things around a family that need work. Why do we want to participate in something for the whole eastern half of North Carolina in community? Because we're called to. Because the people we help outside of Apex are still us. We are those people. And just like our family crisis is, it happens to them and we're to be people of the light. If we're called to be good, loving, and a positive light in the world individually, that means individually we give to the community that reflects that. And the Bishop's Annual Appeal lets there be strong faith in places that are kind of far from here that are still kind of scary. It does great work with enabling communities to respond to specifically family needs, to ministry needs, to poverty needs, to health needs. So I ask you to, when you get your letter, if you didn't get it Saturday, you'll get it tomorrow or Tuesday, to prayerfully consider that and donate. This community for over 20 years has always exceeded its goal. And I ask, just because the priest changed, that that doesn't fail, okay? I pray that we continue to always make that goal. Having a strong Catholic church in eastern North Carolina is living out the gospel that we just heard about bringing light to darkness in the world. This challenge that Christ gives us specifically today when he asked the fishermen to come. I have Jesus here on a boat with a net. And when he asked his disciples to come with them, he asked them to change. He asked them to come and participate in life. He asked them not for everything. He didn't ask them that they would never have any fun anymore, that they couldn't see their family and friends. Well, what he asked them, he said, I want you to come with me to go help people. I want you to come with me to go heal people. I want you to come with me to bring light to a world that's in darkness, which is fear. Darkness is fear. And to bring light to them so that they can live as people of family. And we're doing it not because because we're so good and they're so needy, we're doing it because they're family. And they're family because we're all created in God. And with that great joy, here's the thing that happens with everything when we do it, when God asks us, it circles around and lets us be who we're supposed to be. If we ever, if we ever respond to God in the way that we're invited, then our own self-worth our own notion of who we are or where we're supposed to be will fall into place. There's ways of living life, especially for young people, and the church teaches them, but sometimes we don't hear it because we're already planning for our future. This invitation of Christ to follow him means that we are to live in service to God and others. Those are vocations of marriage. Those are vocations of religious life. Those are vocations of helping the being the person in your family that takes care of everybody. Those are vocations of looking out into the community and spending your time helping and lifting others. There is no vocation taught by the Catholic Church that says live for yourself. 
to be the greatest self-proclaimed person that you can be, to find what makes you the ultimate happiness in life and travel and do that, to find what makes you the most money and acquires you the most toys, that gives you the most vacations. The Catholic Church doesn't teach any of that because all of those things may lead you on a journey, but it won't be a journey to holiness, which means it won't be a journey to full fulfillment, that it won't be a journey to true happiness, that it won't be a journey where you'll know that you can persevere through struggle, that it won't be a journey of the life that you're destined to have. Our vocation is to give ourselves away little by little. We do it in the offertory of our church. We do it in the bishop's annual appeal. And we do it when we help one another. And that's the call that Jesus called his disciples at the very beginning of his ministry. And it hasn't changed at all. It's the same call all of us have today. And the good news is in living it out, we will find an incredible person within the beautiful person that God sees in each one of us with strength and talent and beauty and courage and that those people who need help will find it in us. Prayerfully always, prayerfully always turn to Christ when there's any decision to make about the future because the future the real future is eternal. See, future, the super future is not temporary. It's not our own short-term needs. The real future is God. Always prayerfully turn to that. Christ invites us this day, especially, in these readings, to know that we are, we are worthy. We are loved our dignity and ability and courage is all within if we just follow Christ. Amen. Let us stand and pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in a loving and merciful God, we now offer our prayers and petitions. For Pope Francis, for our clergy, and for all in our church who have been called to the service of God, that they may follow faithfully the example of Christ and bear witness to his goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all public officials, that tomorrow's day of prayer for the legal protection of unborn children may lead to an increased respect for the unborn as well as for all human life, and bear good fruit in our nation and in our laws. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this Word of God Sunday, we pray for our parish community, that just like the apostles responded to Jesus' call and followed him, we too will welcome and proclaim the Word of God in our daily lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are burdened with worry or who suffer illness, that the healing presence of Jesus will be with them and with those who care for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our beloved dead, and especially for John Lynch, for whom this Mass is offered, that they may enter fully into eternal life in God's presence, and may their loved ones be comforted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for your own intentions, held in the silence of your heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear our prayers and petitions and to answer them according to your holy will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, Christ humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. In memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Vincent and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Luis Raphael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Take away the 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you.
worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever be. Worthy of every breath we could ever be. We live for you. Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
empty praise the treasures that fade are never enough and you came along and put me back together every desire is now satisfied here in your 